Chapter 15, Section 4, A Splendid Little War with Spain The Spanish-American War lasted only a few months, but it had dramatic results. The United States won the conflict convincingly, demonstrating military power in overseas combat with few American battle casualties. John Hay, who served as U.S. Ambassador to Britain and later as Secretary of State, described it as a splendid little war, begun with the highest motives, carried on with magnificent intelligence and spirit, favored by that fortune which loves the brave. Fighting begins in the Philippines. Even though the war was sparked by problems in Cuba, the first battle took place much farther away, in the Philippines, a large group of islands southeast of China. The Philippines were Spain's largest remaining colony. As in Cuba, a revolt against Spain had been brewing. Emilio Aguinaldo, a young Filipino, led the resistance. When the Spanish-American War began, he was living in exile in Hong Kong. At least two months before the war was declared, the United States began preparing for battle in the Philippines. If war broke out, it wanted to strike a quick blow against the Spanish fleet in Manila Bay. Theodore Roosevelt, the assistant secretary of the Navy at the time, instructed the commander of the Pacific Squadron, Commodore George Dewey, to sail to Hong Kong and await further orders. On May 1st, just days after the declaration of war, Dewey's squadron steamed into Manila Bay and opened fire on the Spanish fleet. Taken by surprise, the fleet was entirely destroyed. Dewey did not lose a single ship and suffered only a few battle casualties. Dewey had scored a stunning victory, but did not have sufficient troops to land in Manila and take the city. In the meantime, Aguinaldo returned to the Philippines with his rebel forces to fight the Spanish on his own. American reinforcements finally arrived near the end of July. On August 13th, the Philippines fell to a combined force of American soldiers and Filipino rebels. Fighting moves to Cuba. Meanwhile, fighting had begun in Cuba. The U.S. Navy quickly set up a blockade of Havana on the north coast of Cuba. At the eastern end of the island, however, a Spanish squadron slipped into the harbor at Santiago de Cuba. President McKinley ordered troops to sail for Santiago. The plan was to join the Navy there and engage the Spanish. The American troops, led by General William Shafter, arrived outside Santiago on June 20th. The U.S. Army in Cuba consisted of various forces. Among them were four regiments of African-American soldiers, many of whom had fought in the Indian Wars in the American West. The Army also relied on volunteer regiments, including one led by Theodore Roosevelt. When the war began, Roosevelt quit his post as Assistant Secretary of the Navy so that he could join the fighting. Together with Colonel Leonard Wood, he helped form the 1st U.S. Volunteer Cavalry, better known as the Rough Riders. Handpicked by Roosevelt, this regiment was a mix of college athletes and Western cowboys. On July 1st, General Shafter launched his assault on Santiago, moving against Spanish troops dug in along the ridge. Roosevelt and the Rough Riders charged up Kettle Hill, while other U.S. forces fought an even tougher battle for San Juan Hill. By nightfall, the U.S. Army had taken the ridge. The rest of the war went quickly. The American Navy destroyed the Spanish squadron as it tried to leave Santiago Harbor, and on July 17th, Santiago surrendered. The following week, the United States captured Puerto Rico. With no prospect of success, Spain agreed to a peace settlement on August 12th. Four months after the start of the conflict, the war was over. Despite their quick victory, not everything went well for the U.S. forces. About 5,500 Americans died in the war, mostly from tropical diseases like malaria and yellow fever. As regiments were formed on short notice, many soldiers lacked proper equipment and supplies. Most had heavy wool uniforms, a severe liability in Cuba's tropical heat, and food was often of poor quality. Despite these difficulties, the United States had won a major victory in its first overseas war.